Hello guys, it's Jared here, and uh, I'm going to do a review of the third and final film in the Unbreakable Trilogy, or the um, Eastra 117 Trilogy, as it's also known, uh, Glass. So yeah, so I'd say this is kind of a crossover between, you know, the first two movies, you know, Unbreakable and Split. Um, yeah, because I mean, Bruce Willis only had a cameo at the end of Split, which uh, uh, basically was showing that these two films are in the same universe, but, you know, apart from that, you know, they're not really, um, it's not that much of a sequel to it, but apart from that, but this is um, kind of a crossover between those two films, and it can be seen as a sequel to both, um, you know, Unbreakable and Split, so basically we see, um, you know, uh, ever since the first movie, um, <coughs> You know, David Dunn, um, also known as the Green Guard, um, who's played by, you know, uh, Bruce Willis, has, you know, been saving people um, ever since. And his son, uh, Joseph, um, helps him, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, he, like, you know, has, like, a um, hair thing, and they, he listens to him. And it's the same actor who plays um, Joseph in this, who played him in um, Unbreakable, which is uh, pretty cool. And, uh, you know, he basically saves uh, these girls who were kidnapped by uh, the Horde from, you know, Split. I don't think I mentioned in Split, but, um, you know, James McAvoy's, um, you know, super villain name was um, the Horde. Um, because, you know, he has all these personalities inside of him. And, um, you know, basically when, you know, um, Bruce Willis is fighting, you know, James McAvoy's character, they both get taken to, you know... Um, an insane asylum, and basically, and you know, uh, Mr. Glass, you know, Elijah Price, by the way, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, he's in um, the mental institution as well, and basically at that place they specialise in um, working with people who um, believe that they're superheroes and basically try and convince them that they're not uh, superheroes and that, you know, it's all in their head which I think is a very interesting idea and I think it does it it does do it well and yeah I mean I'd say this is probably my least favorite in the trilogy but um, all three are good films that all three are good films but they get less good as they go along so yeah favorite is Unbreakable second favorite is Split and third favorite is uh, this film Glass um, yeah, I like this film, but I'd say I probably have more criticisms with it than I did with um, you know, the first two. Uh, I will say, uh, some people criticise that the title doesn't really make sense, because uh, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, who's Mr. Glass, he doesn't speak until about an hour into the movie. But, I mean, I kind of like how it's called Glass, because obviously, um, you know, Unbreakable uh, refers to Bruce Willis's character, um... Split the title obviously refers to James McAvoy's character, and then Glass refers to Samuel L. Jackson's character. So I like how you know the titles refer to one of the three of those characters, and you know I mean I liked I liked the fact that he doesn't talk until you know an hour into the movie. I thought um, his character was very well uh, built up actually. Uh, I was uh, what's kind of funny is like you have. Uh, Charlene Woodard back as um, Elijah's mother. Um, what's funny is she's actually younger than Samuel L. Jackson, which is weird. I mean, I know um, in Unbreakable, um, it is stated that um, Elijah is quite a bit younger than uh, Samuel L. Jackson actually is, because Elijah in Unbreakable, it's stated that he's he was born in 1961, when in real life Samuel L. Jackson was actually born in 1948, so he he's actually a bit quite a bit older than his character, but at the same time uh, it's kind of weird that you know, I mean it's still um, I still think him and his mother look about the same age because Charlene Woodard is actually younger than Samuel L. Jackson. And I mean, it made sense in Unbreakable to have a younger actress play his mother. Because in that film, you mostly only saw her in uh, flashbacks to Elijah's childhood. So it made sense that she would look, you know, young. Um, and 
I know that like at the end of Unbreakable, they show her in modern day, and I think you know she had makeup on to make her look um, older. But you know, in this, you know, uh, for most of the movie, it's set in modern day, and you know, uh, as, and maybe they did put makeup on her in this to make her look older. But I don't know. I still kind of thought that um, her and Samuel L. Jackson looked about the same age. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, they're actors, so you know. They can play, you know, different ages, and you know it's fine. Um, and yeah, when they have like flash in this film, they do have flashbacks to Joseph's childhood and also flashbacks to Elijah's childhood. And for those, they actually used um, deleted scenes from Unbreakable, which I thought was uh, pretty cool. And uh, another thing is, um, towards the beginning of the film, it's stated that um, Robin Wright's character. Um, passed away uh, five years before this movie takes place um, and I'm not quite sure why you know um, I guess maybe Robin Wright didn't agree to be in this one but yeah um, but yeah, um, yeah but that's interesting and you know you also have yes yeah, so, you know, while they're in the institution you know you have um, Joseph David's son you know um, David's son um, you know, um, who wants to support him while he's in the institution, and you know, Elijah's mother um, is supporting him while he's in the institution, and you also have, you know, Casey, uh, one of the girls who, um, you know, the Horde kidnapped, um, you know, she's supporting him while he's in the institution, and what's kind of interesting is, like, in Split, she only ever really pretended to be his friend, um, she pretended to be his friend so he could help uh, get out. Uh, whereas in this, uh, I feel like she's become genuinely more like sympathetic towards him, which uh, I do kind of get because like even though he's obviously a villain, uh, he is still kind of a sympathetic uh, villain as well, and so is um, Mr. Glass. Honestly, you know. And another thing that's interesting is like, um, of course, uh, M. Night Shyamalan has a cameo in all these movies, uh, and in this they. When he has a cameo in uh, this film, they do acknowledge um, the cameo in um, Unbreakable because in Unbreakable he played um, like a drug dealer, and you know they're like, "Hey, haven't I known you before?" You know, so I like that they acknowledge that, and yeah, it confirms that his character in this is the same character who he was in um, Unbreakable. And another thing is. Um, I don't think I mentioned this in the review of Split, but uh, M. Night Shyamalan does have a cameo in this as well. So I wonder if his character in that movie um, is also meant to be the same character. So, uh, yeah. Um, as for, like, the ending, uh, this is a spoiler, but, um, you know, it turns out that um, the people who work at, like, the institution, you know, they do know that they are, they do have superpowers, but... Um, they want to hide the world from people with abilities, both from, you know, superheroes and supervillains, and basically all three of them uh, get killed off at the end. Yeah, that's a spoiler, of course. I think I said, yeah, spoiler warning. But all three of the, you know, these characters get killed off at the end, and, but um, after they die, like, um, yeah, it turns out Elijah, like, uh, got all, like, the camera recordings of them, and, you know, uh, the after he died, you know, those videos of them got released to the world, and I mean, I liked the kind of idea of them, of people finding out about them after they died, you know, I thought it was pretty cool, but um, I kind of thought the way that they killed off David Dunn, the Green Guard, was quite lame, uh, because I know, like, in Unbreakable, they say that, you know, water is his weakness, but I feel like... <laughs> It's almost like M. Night Shyamalan misunderstood what he meant when he, you know, used that. Because, I mean, in this, they make it out like water is, like, poison to him. Whereas, like, in Unbreakable, it's obviously that, like, he drowns easily in water. But, like, you know, a little bit of water wouldn't kill him. Like, in this, they drown him in a puddle. It's like, really? You know. Um, so, like, is water just poisonous to him? Like, if he just drank a, dr a glass of water, would that kill him, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So that just didn't make sense to me. So, I mean, overall, you know, I mean, I did kind of have a problem with the ending of this film, but, um, 
I think for the most part, um, it was kind of a cool ending how, you know, people found out about them after they died, but you know, just the way they killed off David was kind of lame. But I think apart from that, the problem I have with the ending, I still think this is a very good film. Um, they could have ended, you know, wrapped up the trilogy a bit better because you know, the ending was kind of a bit, you know. But I still think this is a good film and a good enough, you know, ending to this trilogy. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and... Uh, tell me what you think of this trilogy. How would you rank the films in the series? Um, yeah, so my r ranking is Unbreakable, Split, and then Glass. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.